Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so we give this chance to our facilitator tonight. Okay, Madam Faith, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for uh, availing yourself tonight to share with us. This broadcast is being recorded so that those who didn't have the opportunity, this is the 8th of March, and I'm con and I'm certain that a lot of our women are somewhere, they are in one program or the other, but we will have to go on with the program while thinking that they will be meeting us. We are sure that by 30 minutes, you will present to us something, and then we will take one or two questions so that by 8 o'clock, we are out. Yeah. We are out. We, we, we are very busy. <laughs> and we are certain that God is going to help us. So the floor is yours, ma. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Amos Ben Ben. Uh, yes. And everyone uh, who is in this meeting today, I can see we have Cameroonians, we have Nigerians and Kenyans here. Um, I welcome you to the program today. And today, uh, since uh, our Reverend has just um, given us a word of prayer, so I will just go direct to our topic. Uh, today we are discussing about the power of a woman in a relationship. Um, we can see that in our topic, we already have three keywords, uh, which is a woman, power, and relationship. So before um, I continue in explaining all those, I would want us to know what is uh, these three words. The meaning of the woman, the meaning of the word relationship, and the meaning of the word uh, power. So to start with, uh, what is a relationship? A relationship is a connection of two things. That is what a relationship is. And that's why when a man and a woman comes together and, uh, and are married, they, they have a relationship, okay? So number two, what is a woman? A woman is an adult human being and the Bible um, calls a woman or the meaning of a woman in the Bible um, in Genesis chapter two, verse 23, uh, when Adam was created, God saw that he was not uh, comfortable or he was lonely. And therefore God created uh, Eve for Adam and that verse states that at last, here is one of my own kind, bones from my bones and flesh uh, from my flesh. And then he named him, he named her a woman because she was taken out of a man. That is the definition of the word woman uh, in the Bible, meaning that a woman is something that has been taken from the, uh, from the man. Then we have the word power. Power is ability. It is the ability of doing and accomplishing uh, something. The, uh, your capability to uh, do a, a task and accomplish it, it shows that you have the power. It shows that you have the ability to do that thing. So in relationship, power means that uh, the ability of a person to exert control and influence uh, in fixing issues, getting things done, and offering an empathetic ear or a shoulder to cry on when a, a partner is in a vulnerability uh, spot. So that is uh, what power means in a relationship. Uh, as you can see, a woman is at the center Today we are saying that we are celebrating uh, International Women, Women's Day. And from the creation story, a woman is at the center of power and relationship. Since at the time uh, God created a woman, she has been in the, at the center of power 
and relationship, okay? So how comes this woman is at the center? And where did this relationship start? Yeah? We see in the creation story before there was even a person uh, on earth, in fact, before even the earth was created, uh, a relationship existed because God the Father, God the Son, and God the, uh, the Holy Spirit are lived as three persons in one. And therefore, they, they dwelt together and they still dwell together till today. So relationships has been there uh, since those time. And what is uh, the difference between now and then is that the relationship that was there was uh, the Trinity relationship. And that's why out of the overflow of their love, out of the overflow of the love that the Trinity had, they decided let's create a person who has an image uh, of us. And therefore, Adam was created. Okay, so that's where relationships started. And after Adam was created, um, uh, he named all the animals, all the creatures, all the uh, plants and the trees. And God realized that this man is lonely. And therefore, he decided to, to create for him a helper. And that's, and that's how a woman was created. Therefore, it means that even if this woman was created as a solution to the problem uh, that God saw. So being a woman being a solution, it means that a solution must be powerful than the problem itself. Okay, so that's why uh, we are celebrating today because we are a solution of that problem that God saw. And therefore, if a woman is a solution, and then she's stronger, she's powerful. And being powerful doesn't mean that she's not a helper. She is still a helper because that is what God wanted. First of all, you must understand that there are three persons in a relationship, okay? And this three person is God, a, a husband, and a wife, okay? When these three people uh, come together in any relationship, because when a woman was created, there was God, that was the Trinity, then they created a man, then from the man they created a woman. And that's why in every relationship that we build today, God must be there. There must be three persons in that relationship. Okay? And that's why uh, um, and those maybe who may be writing, you're going to draw a triangle. Uh, let me show you mine because I had drawn it as I was preparing. I don't know whether it will be visible. Oh, my God. Can you see it? It's visible, yes. Oh, it's great. Visible. Ah, yes. Great. So at the top there, we have God. At one corner, we have a husband. And uh, on the other uh, corner, we have a wife. Then from the oh, husband, oh. Uh, there is a narrow going direct oh, of God. Yeah. And from the wife, there is another arrow going direct to God. Meaning that everybody in the relationship must be connected to God. Everybody in the relationship must be connected to God. And between the husband and the wife, uh, at the bottom there, it's a husband and a wife. Between the husband and the wife, there are some roles. Now that everybody is connected to God, between here at the bottom, there are some roles uh, which every partner uh, are supposed to pray for this relationship to work best. And uh, so if, if you want this uh, relationship to work best and glorify God, God who is the starter, who is the, uh, who started these relationships, then we start with God above, okay? So we have some roles 
the hierarchy from God to the husband, to the wife, and then to the children. Okay. I think I had also drawn it. Let me show you, please. Um, hmm. Is it visible? Yes, yes, it's, 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 it's visible. It's visible. At the top there here. Is God, there is God. Yeah. There is a husband. There's husband, man. Yeah. As wife, woman. Yes. Yeah. And then we have children. Oh, great. Yeah, but I don't I don't see that which is written in red. The, the smaller words, yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. God being at the top there, he is the relationship giver. Then okay. he created a man. So uh, as Christ is the head of the church, the man is the head of the family, of the house. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the man is second from God. And that's why the man's role is to protect the family. The man's role is to lead the family. The mm. man's role is to provide for the family. So uh, from God, uh, the man has got three roles to protect, to provide, and to lead. Meaning that uh, a man must show leadership in his family. A must, it is a must because he's the head of the family. As Christ is the head of the church, the man is the head of the family, and therefore, he must show leadership. Then from the man, the arrow connects down to the wife or to the woman. The role of a woman is to comfort. The role of a woman is to comfort, to teach, and to nurture. Okay? That's why when we give, um, we bear children, uh, we are there to teach these children. Like, for example, if, you, if, if I get a child today, I must teach this child how to breastfeed, okay? Then after that, after that period of breastfeeding, breastfeeding, I will teach this child how to sit down, okay? I continue teaching this child step by step until she or he is, is a grown-up. So it is the work of a woman. The man has shown leadership, leadership at the top, and then the work of a woman is to teach, okay? To comfort when there are problems in a relationship, when there are um, uh, challenges in this marriage, it is the work of a wife to comfort the husband and the children and to bring them together. This, that is the role of a wife. And that's why the wife or the, uh, the woman is so powerful because God created her as a solution. So she can be able to nurture the family, yeah? Um, nurturing, I mean, uh, you see, when we, you build your own house, uh, sometimes we do plant some flowers outside there. So it is the work of the gardener to water that plant, to weed for the, that plant, for it to, to grow and be beautiful or um, flourish. So it is also the work of a woman to nurture the family, okay? Mm -hmm. Taking care of the husband, taking care of the children until that family are prospers, okay? Then the last branch is the children. The work of the children is to obey God and to obey their children, their, their, sorry, their parents. Obey and love God, obey and love their parents. So for a woman to be able to comfort, to nurture and to teach, and she must be able or she must be having that power, the power, the ability, the capability to do all those things. And for, for her to be able to do all those things, then she must be able to attain the techniques of building a successful relationship. And these techniques, we have mm -hmm. around seven. Uh, these are the, the things that gives the woman power to be able to nurture the family, 
to be able to get, uh, to comfort the family and to be able to teach the family. Number one technique, or you can call it a tool, or you can call it a principle. And number one is communication. We all know by now that communication is the engine of every relationship. Communication is where it starts. Therefore, any woman who wants to accomplish her role of solving the problem of loneliness, she must have communication skills because you cannot comfort your husband if you don't know how to talk. You cannot teach your child if you don't know how to communicate. So it is very, very important for us as women to learn how to communicate. And the key to communication is language, meaning that it's what you say and how you say it, okay? It is what you say and how you say it. That is the key to communication because you might be having a very nice point or you might be having a very a good idea, but the way you put it, the language you use um, uh, kills that idea. The language you use brings conflict. So language in communication is very, very important. It is the key what you say and how you say it. Okay, that was technique number one. Technique number two is responsibility. Those are the powers that every woman must have, responsibility. Responsibility is a state of being accountable. When partner takes up their, their responsibility and are being uh, motivated, they, they are self-motivated, then they are able to achieve their goals. E.g., or for example, you must understand that you are responsible for your own happiness. Sometimes we think that our partners are there to make us happy. And that's where we fail completely because everyone in a relationship must be able to, re to be responsible for their own happiness and peace. Okay? No one can make you sad or unhappy and no one can break your heart without you letting them. What do I mean by this? Your partner may do things that are, uh, that are not good or that you don't like uh, or that things that will affect you directly. And <clears throat> what happens if you don't let those things uh, cook in your head, then you can't be unhappy. Okay. So you are responsible for your own happiness and peace because there is nothing good or bad, but our thinking makes it so. For example, if I tell you um, you are such a bad person and assume ah, I know that I'm good, you can't get annoyed. But if you let your mind tell you that faith said I'm bad, then you had to you you get destroyed so you are responsible for your own happiness and a uh, peace that one must be able to sink in us because we have been thinking that our our partners are there to make us happy Where, whereas that should not be the case you should be responsible for your own happiness okay because if you find that you are expecting someone to make you happy, then you are setting yourself for disappointment. You'll be disappointed because these people cannot make you happy. Even if it is your husband or your partner and you are not taking responsibility of your own peace and happiness, then he cannot make you happy. So it is because one of you uh, must be responsible. You being responsible of your own happiness and your partner also being responsible of their own happiness. Okay, technique number three is intimacy and sex. Intimacy and sex. Intimacy and sex, it is where it continues. That is where relationship and marriages continues. Because sex 
is the oil that lubricates your relationship. Therefore, for you all, being a woman, you must be intimate with your partner. Being a woman, you must be able to meet the needs of your partner, okay? Because having sex is a need that must be fulfilled in a relationship. Why? Because in First uh, Corinthians, uh, chapter 7, verse 3 to 5, a husband, it is states, a husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and wife too should fulfill the husband's sexual needs. So sex is an important factor in your marriage because if you don't meet his needs, you are an average woman. I will tell you for the fact, you become a, an average woman and you leave a void, you leave a gap to be filled by someone else. So being able to build a successful relationship, being able or having the capability of building a successful relationship, you must be there for your partner. You must fulfill that need because it is a need. Yeah? It is not a sin. It is sex is a sin when done outside marriage, but when done in the context of marriage, it's not a sin, okay? Sex is supposed to take place in the context of marriage because it is the Bible that tells us in Mark 10, Mark chapter 10, verse 7 to 8, that a man will leave mother and father and he will be joined with his wife and they shall be one thing. So the word joined means there will be sexual intimacy. Okay? Then principle number four, or technique number four, is presence. If you're a woman, and here, not I'm not talking uh, to women only. It is going to both parties, a, a woman and a man. Presence. Presence is the art of giving your full attention, yeah? It's the art of being there for your partner. Uh, with our today's world, uh, there are dozens of distractions vying for our attentions. When a conversation... Nani, uh, oh my God. I think we need Nani, to mute. Let me mute. Mm -hmm. Yes, just mute everybody. Yeah, let me until just. The... <laughs> okay, I think we are done now. A uh, good. Okay, so I was saying, uh, when in a conversation, today there are so many, many, many distractions, and when you can be in a conversation with your partner and you get distracted, okay, and the truth is. When you get distracted, like right now, we have been distracted by the noise that has come from somewhere. Yeah? So our attention got lost somehow. The same thing happens in our relationships. If you're not giving your full attention to your partner, it is noticeable. Or your partner can notice, oh, I'm talking to this person, but this person is looking at the television. It is not noticeable. So. For you to be able to attain a successful relationship, you must be able to give your, your full presence, okay? Your full attention, okay? Here, you might have some tips to, for more presence, like uh, let's, uh, let your spouse know when you are not, all, when you're not ready for any communication, yeah? If, your spouse is trying to tell you something and you are distracted. You know, you might be distracted uh, even emotionally, spiritually, or physically. Whenever you feel that you are distracted and your spouse is trying to talk to you, you should let them know so that they don't feel bad trying to explain, to explain something to you and you're not listening to it. So it is very, very important to let your spouse know when you are distracted. 
Okay, point number five is empathy. That is technique number five. Empathy is the ability to understand the feeling of another person. It is the power of getting into the stories of that other person. Do you have the ability to feel the pain of your partner? Yeah, it is not easy as you may think, but it is critical element of a strong, healthy relationship. If you want your relationship to be strong and healthy, then you must be in a position to empathize with your partner. For example, let's assume that um, you had a very, very tough um, uh, day uh, in your working area or in your place of work, and then you come home, you are so tired, you are expecting your partner to at least feel or be, uh, comfort you. So for her to be able to comfort you, then she must be able to get into that shoe. She must be able to tell you, oh, my dear, it was uh, only for today. Tomorrow will be a good day. That's what empathy is. So if you want uh, your relationship to be good, you must be empathetic. Okay, and how do you become empathetic? Number one, you get curious. Let's assume that your husband came uh, home very, very tired and you really don't know what is happening in his life. You are supposed to be uh, curious. Ask him, yeah, uncover the circumstances that are making him look dull, yeah? Make an eye contact, look direct to his eye, look direct to her eye and feel the pain that your partner is eh, yeah is feeling once you are able to do that then you have got the power you have got the ability to move forward that relationship then another technique number six is appreciation appreciation in today's demanding world simple actions of appreciation and acceptance makes a, a big difference. You know, like in Kenya, let me use Kenya. Uh, right now, um, we are having some tough times here because there is no money. There's a lot of the inflation because of the inflation. So due to this stress, life stressing issues, if someone come and just compliment you, you feel good. She makes your day. So even the simplest compliment or acknowledgement can brighten your partner's day, okay? The best part of this is when your partner feels like their effort at something are recognized, then they are able to do that thing again and again. Let me tell you, dear ones, this is where we fail because my partner comes, let me use my partner as an example, my partner comes and uh, brings me a glass of water. And uh, because I'm just used to, her, to him, I think it's obvious. I fail to appreciate, okay? Do you think he will bring me the glass of water again? He will not because I did not appreciate. But if he buys me meat today, yeah, and I appreciate, he will feel good and tomorrow, he will come with a, another piece of meat. That's what appreciation is. If you are a woman, you must have the power of appreciating whatever uh, or whichever gift that your partner is uh, bringing to you. Appreciation is a nut that many of us forget, but it is very, very powerful because when you appreciate your partner, then, he feels good. He feels like he want to do this that thing again and again. Okay, so those are the six things or six techniques that every woman and that every partner must have for a relationship to be as successful. But there is one bonus that I'm going to give you that we must do all the six and lower this one that I'm going to give you, the expectations. 
You see, when we were getting married or when we were getting into a relationship, and maybe our expectations were so high, yeah? And when we come into this relationship and find that things are not working the way we thought they could work, then uh, we become disappointed. So if you don't want to be disappointed in your relationship, even in, at your workplace, even with your sibling, because relationship can be between you and your siblings, relationship can be between you and your workmates. If you don't want to be disappointed, do not have high expectations. Try to lower your expectations because high expectations are killing families. High expectations are killing marriages because I think that my husband can buy, is supposed to buy for me a, a, an aeroplane, whereas he's not capable. So that expectation that I, that I have will start eating me emotionally. And definitely our uh, connection or our, our emotion connection, we will start getting disconnected. And once you get disconnected in a relationship, yeah, there become a gap. What happens next is that there is a third party who gets in there. And when there is a third party, that relationship becomes messy. Together. So <laughs> I wasn't taking a lot of time. Uh, I would want to say that life is all about relationships. And they should bring joy. The relationship that you have should bring joy. But how can you have joy when you, don't, when you don't know how to build that relationship? You must be able to build that relationship so that you, you have that joy that relationship brings. So for you to be able to have that joy, you must practice the six uh, techniques that we have learned today. And when you practice them, they are so powerful. Yeah, they may seem simple, but they are so powerful when practiced well. So up to there, um, a counselor, Pastor uh, Reverend Amos, I think I will hand over to you uh, so that we can have some uh, questions. Uh, those who may be having some questions, uh, just unmute yourself, Reverend. You're good to go, Reverend. Hello. Thank you very much. It's a deep, deep presentation. Very mm -hmm. deep. Very deep. And I'm so happy that, in fact, you have... You have said a lot of things that definitely make a lot of sense there, okay? And I'm so happy that you have really, really, really uh, given us that uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, the those who have listened, please, do you have a question, please? If you have a question, please let, let me know. Just open your mic and then you either ask or you contribute yes the floor is now open yeah who will begin anyone 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 please we've had some people who have joined us we ha we are having uh ophelia noella lois and I don't know who Techno C16 is. I don't know who Techno C16 is. If you can let us see your face or you tell us where you are coming from, it will be good for us. Okay, any any contributions from anybody? Pastor Tumda, Noela, do you have any contribution? So I came very your late. Mic is so I came very your late. Mic, your mic is off. Okay. Okay, you came late. We are going to make the, the video available because it's been recorded so that you can get the entire presentation. 
Okay, but we we're talking about the power of a woman in the relationship. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, and she gave us some some powerful seven points. I can say seven points, tools that ladies can use to actually build up a great relationship. For the woman to do or to 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 influence the family, she must have the power. And the power is gotten from the six techniques plus one that she has enumerated for us. She spoke about communication, responsibility, intimacy, and sex, his presence or her presence, empathy, appreciation. So if a woman does that, it will be absolutely, absolutely, in fact, she will, <laughs> she will make the difference. That's the power they are talking about. It's not the power of fighting the man. Mm, is the power of influence, power of making a change, power of influencing the family positively, not negatively. Pastor Tum Tunde, do you have anything to say, sir? Your microphone is off. Your microphone is on. Is 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 off? Yes. Or oh, is muted, please? Yes, go ahead. I say it is well understood, very well. <laughs> PowerPoint. Do you have any question or you, well, you well have any understood. contribution? Uh, uh, the, the third expectation that uh, which is good or to be because, because we talk about we are talking about relationship. Uh, relationship now, you, you have to go in connection with God. So with God, so our situation has to be in high, in higher realm with God. So we should not bring our okay. situation low. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other person, please? It's okay, I'm coming. Okay, I'm coming. Anybody? Lois, do you have anything to say? Ophelia, anything to say? Not at all, I'm all right. Eh? I'm okay. 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 There is a statement that that she made. In fact, it's an amazing statement. She said, she said something very amazing. She said, and I took that one under intimacy and sex. She said, you that 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 when a woman you know gives that gap the gap has to be fulfilled by someone else you know it's a very serious statement yeah it's, it's a very serious statement because all these things are is where the man was lacking and that's why the woman came to be so if you Many times, this is what I've said to, to a lot of women. They say, I'm looking for a man that would take care of me. It's good. But that's not what scripture said. When they were coming, they were coming to fulfill a need in the life of a man. Now, when you do your job, the rest is just comes forth into place. <laughs> but many people, like, 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 like you see a woman say, do you love me? The woman asks you, are you sure? <laughs> you know? It's not about love. It's about playing your own role. Yes. The, the rest of the thing will fall in place. Because what a man needs is he who will complete him. Not he who will come and be a burden to him again. You know, that, that time, many men will sit down quietly. And they will examine how they've actually put themselves in bondage again. And it's so painful when you know that you are getting married 
to have peace, only to get married, that your peace will double. Because the women do not, women do not know their rule, they don't know what they're supposed to do. But if they can know, get to know all these things here, it's really going to help them. That's what I can say for today. <laughs> because we want to talk, are we talking about going, talking about going, going? Okay. Hey. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, I need Hello. To, uh... Yes. Yeah, I wanted to correct something. Uh, I yes. talked about uh, expectations. And the first, okay. I said everybody must be connected to God. And our expectation with God must be high. Yeah. But when it comes to relationship, uh -huh. do not have so um do not have high expectations beyond what your partner can achieve or beyond what your partner can right. do. Yeah. So this right. is the right. expectations that we are having are killing relationship because when you find that you are expecting your your partner to do something and that thing is not done, then there is um a disagreement, there is uh you feel bad. So we should not yes. have so much expectations beyond what our uh, partners can do. That's what I was meaning. Okay, thank you very, very much. The, the worst thing here is even that people don't even know the expectation. They don't even, and I believe that the majority of the crisis we have is because people don't even know the expectation. What's the expectation? That's why in marriage counseling, I, I always bring the man and the woman. The man will tell me what he's expecting from this woman in this marriage. I now, I will ask the woman, are you sure you can meet the expectation? <laughs> Then the one will say, yes, I can meet, okay, I say, okay. Then we move on. And then we do that, we write them down in a piece of paper. So that after one year, that's the is The expectations, are, they are the source where the problem is coming from. They, they are, from the, that's just clear. If there were no expectations, we would not have any problem. <laughs> but in sure. addition to the expectations, People don't even know that there's anything like expectation. Yeah. <laughs> and I just leave. It is well in Jesus' name. Thank God for, for Tim for coming in. So it's helping them with the knowledge and they are propagating and they are propagating. Thank you so much. God bless you. I don't know if there's anybody having anything again. If not, we will ask our guest speaker tonight to pray for us. Who is a who doubles as the vice coordinator of Timfa Cameroon alumni? Because we crisscross Nigeria and Kenya. Thank you very much, Madam Faith. You did a wonderful job today. Thank you so much. The Lord bless uh, you. Thank you, Reverend Cancer Amos. Um, and thank you so much for thank everyone you. who attended tonight's meeting. Uh, I believe it was wonderful. Uh, I felt uh, good talking to you guys. And Amen. I know that with the power that God has given us, with the authority that God has given us, we are going to build um, beautiful marriages and uh, success, successful ones. Uh, but Amen. before I wind up, I would want to tell you people that there is a certain stage in a marriage that has got so many problems. If you find um, uh, some partners are going through problems, try to help them. Now that we have the knowledge, let's try to help these people. Let's try uh, to, uh, to, uh, to come into the gap and help them out. And God will uh, bless us for that work. So Amen. I'm blessed uh, just being uh, together with you uh, Cameroonians and uh, Nigerians and Kenyans, God Amen. bless you so much. Amen. So let's close Amen. with a word of prayer. Let's pray. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have come before thy holy presence once again, O Lord. We want to thank you for this group, O Lord Jehovah Master. We want to thank you for the team, O Lord Jehovah Master. Thank you, Father, because you have been together with us. From the time we started our meeting, O Lord, you have shown us mercy. You have been together with us. And now, Father, we pray. The Jehovah God, that whatever we have learned today, let it be of help in our relationship. Let it be of great help in our lives, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that Jehovah God, you may remember each and every uh, 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 family that is uh, presented here in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your people, Lord, because you are a giver. We praise you and we worship your holy name because you are good, O oh Lord. It is in Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Have a wonderful time and God bless those who have attended the program in Jesus' name. Amen. God Thank bless you, you too. You. And have a good Bye -bye night. Bye-bye so much, Auntie Faith. It was, it was great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>